This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Uh, first of all, the last bit really on uh, debt borrowing. I said, remember, a small company, no choice, is just take a loan and there's nothing more to say about it. For a large company, uh, issue debentures, loan stock, bonds. I hope I've been making sense. As I said, most of it is really just terminology. However, uh, the last bit that relates to debentures, loan stock, bonds, clearly, if I'm raising money by issuing debentures, I want, obviously, to offer as low an interest rate as I can. But if it's too low, clearly people won't lend for money. All right? And so, I say, hopefully it won't take many minutes, but be aware of a few ways, ways of being able to offer low interest. And again, because I've got to make sure everybody understands. Just suppose interest rates in Latvia and the banks were 10%. I would obviously be happier to borrow money at 8%. But how can I persuade people to lend? If I'm only giving eight, then they could get ten from the bank. You hear? That's what I mean. But how can I do it? How can I get Yelena Yel Yel to lend money when I want to give her eight? The way I'll do it is, as you'll see, by offering her other benefits. The first and the most obvious is this. Promise to repay at what we call a premium. Now here there's no numbers. It's just being clear what we mean and being able to describe it. Uh, but what I mean by that is this. I might issue 8% uh, debentures and let's suppose 8% is a low rate of interest alright so at the moment that's not very attractive but they're 8% debentures repayable in 5 years Still not very attractive, but I say they're repayable in five years at a premium of, let's say, 10%. Now, it's probably already obvious, but I say you can't be asked any arithmetic on this, but what that means is... We'll borrow in units of 100. That's the nominal value. So you lend me 100. You'll get interest at 8%. And the interest is always on nominal. So you'll get interest. You all agree? $8 per year. Happy? So still not very attractive. However, the repayment in five years' time normally you'd expect to be repaid 100. But here I've promised that I'll repay you 5% more. If ever it's repayable at a premium, uh, 10% rather, the 10% is always based on nominal value. So for every 100 I've borrowed, I'll actually repay 110. And surely that's going to be much more attractive to you. The interest on its own wasn't. 
But of course, the fact you know you'll get an extra $10 at the end clearly makes it more attractive. It's a reason why you might be prepared to accept less interest. Does that make sense, everybody? Mm -hmm. Of course, the company still ends up paying more, obviously. Um, you know, it, 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 I, maybe I'm paying less interest, but I, and obviously I end up paying more at the end. But that can still be very good because you see, if I'm borrowing money to buy a new machine, very often a new investment takes several years to start making money for me. And so the beauty of it here is at the beginning when the machine's not perhaps earning very much, I'm paying low interest. I'm going to have to pay back more at the end, but I'm hoping you know, that in five years' time, the machine by then is making lots of money. You with me? Mm -hmm. uh, no, that's a delaying payment. So it's very common. But that's the first of three ways I'll mention ways in which you can get away with paying less interest each year. All right. Does that make sense, everybody? For heaven's sake, argue with me. And I'll tell you to shut up. But, um, I guess, no problem. I tell you, uh, one more bit of terminology. Uh, earlier, I said, you know, that, sorry. Although this is very popular in real life, and in exams, you'll see tomorrow, when we do more numbers, very often we'll be repaying it a premium. Um, if we're not told anything, you assume we repay a hundred. You know, that's the standard rule. Well, repaying the nominal, the word for it is repay at par. If ever you're told they're repaid at par, repaying at par simply means repay nominal of a hundred. So obviously the document, the advert, when I issue, will tell people the interest and the repayment terms. If they repay at par, they'll get repaid the hundred. However, to get lower interest, maybe repaid a premium. Well, I'll go somewhere. Okay. So, clear number one. All right, the second, there are in fact lots of ways, but I'm obviously I'm concerned about the exam. The second way that could be mentioned in the exam is in fact very, very similar. But instead of promising to repay at a premium, the other way is to issue the debt at a discount. Now again, you can't be asked any numbers on this to make sure you can be able to write down what we mean. So again, if I show you by example, what we might do is this. We might issue a uh, 5% debentures at 80 repayable in 5 years at par I'm sure you can imagine already the effect is very much the same. Uh, surely when I raise the money, the company receives only 80. You know, for every certificate, obviously. We receive 80. However, the certificates are still in units of 100. So the nominal value is 100. But the companies only had 80. 
Uh, the, the pay interest each year. What will the interest be, please, in dollars? Say again. Oh, it was 20. In dollars, how much interest each year? Five. Uh, the inter the five percent debentures, and so always it's five percent of nominal, and therefore the company will be paying interest of five dollars per year. Clear? Now already, of course, it means uh, investors are actually doing better than five percent. It's not quite as low as it looked. Uh, because the investor only paid 80, he's going to get $5 a year. And so we're actually paying interest 5 on 80. We're paying 6.25%. Would you agree? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's still perhaps a very low rate. Why on earth are they happy to uh, accept only 6.25%? It's because they'll be repaid... Well, even though they only lent us 80, they'll get repaid nominal value of 100. So I must keep repeating, you will not be asked any arithmetic on it. But be clear what we mean by issue of the discount and why people might like it. Company likes it. Because the interest payments each year are lower than they otherwise would be. Hopefully in five years we can afford all that extra. Investors, if everybody's different, but again it's a bit like I said earlier, uh, if our investors are people who aren't particularly worried about the income, all right, uh, but would rather have a higher value, I think you know what I mean, in fact, I remember what was very popular in the UK about, when was it, about 15 years ago. You've got a lot of companies that started, it became very popular, issuing what we call deep discounted bonds, where there's a huge discount. Uh, or even zero coupon bonds. What they used to do, was no to write this down, but you'd get companies issuing debt Hundred dollars debt. Or I will write that, but don't copy it. They were issuing debt at let's say sorry. At up oh, back up to the top, beg your pardon. They were issuing debentures at let's say fifty. So they were hundred dollar benches, but you're only paying fifty. They gave no interest at all. Zero percent. They called zero coupon. 0% debentures which should be 20. Wonderful for the company. They get all that money. And for five years, they pay no interest at all. Clear? Why on earth would anybody lend you at no interest? It's because they were repayable at par. And so in a few years' time, you'd pay that 50, you got back 100. Yeah? And yeah, in fact, we were quite short, so you know, it was only two or three years or something. Uh, and of course, it was wonderful. I'll happily do without interest for a few years if I end up doubling my money. So I say to a company, lovely, no interest at all, huge repayment. But you know, if it was a new company, they were hoping in a few years, oh, we'd be so big we can easily afford to repay. Investors were very greedy. People love them because they have huge repayment. Because the one big risk is what happens if in five years' time the company hasn't grown and can't repay? Who would be? Then obviously you're in a bit of a mess, and that's happened. These were terribly popular, and then sort of five years later, it came time for repayment, and an awful lot of the companies went bankrupt. You'd have no interest, and you got no repayment either. You suddenly became a lot less popular. Huh? 
We've only been served the word zero coupon, that's what these were. There was zero interest. And the reason people bought them is there was this huge, well, there was huge discount. You've got a great profit to be on. 